The Leo and Danny Show. I've become sadistic and drunk with power. Oh my god. I hope that you get big enough one day where you can just have an assistant to absolutely just make do stupid shit all day. How funny would that be? Like, count the pages in that book. Make sure. That's 236. You mean make sure the page number lines up with how many actual physical slips of <laughs> yeah. papyrus or, yes. or paper product are in the book? Yes. He has to stay in your room and do that, and then you just come in and berate him verbally every now and then. Is it annoying? And I'm asking <laughs> hypothetically because I know yeah. you don't know the answer to this. Oh, but isn't it annoying how when you open a book and you turn read the pages and you start reading, it always starts on page 13. Yeah. And it's like, what happened to page 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12? It is odd. I agree. Um, you you read more books than me, so do you have an answer for that? What do you think? Are they just trying to fuck with us? I don't know. What have you been reading, though, Leo? Well, I have been reading uh, Green Lights by Matthew McConaughey. It's fantastic. I highly recommend it to everyone okay. out there. Will you ever consume any piece of art that doesn't have a hunk leading man attached to it? Well, it's inspiring. I, you know, he fucking was working out. He talks about all the bitches he used to like bang in like, Hollywood. I'm, I'm sorry. You're right. It was it's ridiculous. He talked about meeting his wife for the first time. It's pretty hilarious. But no, but he also talks about taking a trip down the Amazon. Maybe being you. Maybe that's the first thing we do, Danny. We go and we take we do a trip down canoeing down the Amazon video. No. Why not? There it are was in the book and I got inspired. There are snakes and there yes. are brown skinned people with blow darts. Yes. You're, he, he mentioned all that. He had to get to a, imagine this. He gets to a village and everybody's like touching him like, oh, strong white man. And then they make him fight the biggest black guy that in the village. That is not true. It had, that's, he said this happened. It doesn't matter. He's a liar. He I refuse to believe Matthew McConaughey. Matthew did this. Mandingo fought a big black he said guy he got in his his ass, Amazon he, village. He said he thought he lost. But the guy at the end said something and walked away and the village started chanting his name. Well, not his name. They just like chanted some word. And he and he goes, did I win? And the guy goes, no, but you 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 like tied him or you like stood your ground. It was great. No, this is a and then they mega, partied all night. This is a megalomaniacal fantasy by a coked up oh, Hollywood. Actor. He did say he took ecstasy in the and at the Amazon at the Amazon or while he was canoeing, he took ecstasy. So that could be a thing. He's also been arrested for marijuana possession in Austin and his biggest break came because he was working on 6th Street at an all-black jazz bar. So he's a pretty interesting guy. Doing what there? He was bartending. or And also serving tables to, like, black men. And then what happened? A talent scout came in one and fucking gave him guy. a role? Yeah, one guy saw him and wanted him for days and confused, bro. And then he did the all right, all right, all right. And then the fucking girls get older. And I, st I get older, the girls stay the same age. He did. He had those two lines. And... That's his line about fucking high school girls? Yeah. Okay. He was a guy, yeah. I heard Channing Tatum got discovered the same way. And it really... Mm. bums me out because i love the theory that hard work trumps everything yeah. then you hear about channing tatum yeah. strolling through an outdoor strip mall mm. in miami florida and a hollywood agent puts him in a film and he's a big star yeah absolutely the craziest story is fucking uh chris pratt dude listen he was an a homeless person in hawaii living in a tent and he got a one day a week gig at like a a beachside bar and a fucking agent from Hollywood saw him when she was on vacation in Hawaii and said, wow, oh, fuck yeah, he fucked her, dude. He used his penis as a pedestal, which my father told me to do a long time ago. And I kind of have. I have used it that's, a little bit as a pedestal. One could say that's all you've done. That's honestly all I've done. What does it mean exactly to use your penis as a pedestal? It means that you use your penis to help you succeed in life, mostly in ways with either A, money or, you know, you know, gigs or things of that nature. Yeah. Yeah sales and things you know yeah, yeah it, could, it could be in any profession but usually it aids you monetarily okay yeah. your penis is a pedestal right yeah i think you it's like using your penis as a weapon mm -hmm. the problem is you never put your penis back in the sheath no i didn't i didn't and it, it really ended up causing me a lot of harm in my life but it's okay because this is how i ended up here yeah the good news is, is if you keep wearing this around i think your charm is gonna wear off and you're not gonna have the sex addiction problem anymore wow buddy. you could get a job as a traffic cone oh that's funny <laughs> that's good somebody wrote that on my instagram or somebody who rips tickets at a toll booth Oh, I could be that. Yeah. Well, listen, guys. All right. It's the rainiest day of the year here in L.A. It's 46 degrees. You got to cut me a break for the for the coat. All right. It's it's my friend's sister made it. I like it. And I wore it today.